Hi, I'm Jeremy Marozo. First, I'd like to thank the organizer to give me this great opportunity to share some of my work with you, even though it's virtually. In 2019, we argued with some friends and colleagues that the scientific community should show the example and reduce its carbon footprint by organizing more virtual conference. And then bang! Everybody's starting doing this. It's incredible. I didn't thought that we had such a big impact. It's great to see. So let's take this opportunity to communicate differently. You are watching this video on the last day of the conference. You, you might, must have seen a lot of great talk and learned a lot. Um, so let's take it easy. And we're going to start by looking at a small video clip of a recent movie called The Sound of Metal. It is a story about a rock musician that suddenly loses his hearing. So he rushed to the nearest audiologist to ask him to fix whatever is wrong with him. The audiologist tells him, you know, chances are nothing's going to come back. The only option that you will have is the cochlear implant. The rock musician say, great, I'll take two of those. Do you have them in stock? Thinking that once you get the implant, you can walk out and hear normally. I was the only one in the movie theater that started laughing and my daughter was really embarrassed. In the video clip that you're going to see, it is when he's listening to the music for the first time. Although I really enjoyed that movie, the CI simulation perpetuates the idea that CI users perceive sound as if it was processed through a vocoder. And based on the latest research, we know that it's not true. For example, Michael Dorman and his group have asked people with a single-sided deafness, SSD, and a CI on the other side, whether a sound processed through a vocoder was similar to the sound that they perceived through their CI ear. And here's the response of one of them. The sun is finally shining. No. The sun is finally shining. No, 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 it's not that one. It's not that one? Okay. The sun is finally shining. No. So to assess really whether different type of vocoder reflect the perception of speech through a CI, Chadia Karoui and in the group of uh, Olivier Machere have asked CI users with the SSD to rate different vocoders. And here's the result. Each point is a different listener. The first line represents the match with a scene vocoder. The second one with a noise vocoder. And the last one with their funky PCHC carrier. The result shows a slight preference for the last one. But overall, the rating were more rated as more different than similar. Additionally, we have shown that a pulse train is more perceived as an inharmonics complex tone. And recently, Dorman again found that speech sound more like a filter signal with spectral smearing and F0 contour flattening. So bottom line, listening to music through a CI is not like a vocoder. The sun is finally shining. No. Going back to the movie clip of The Sound of Metal, the second thing that bugs me is that it perpetuates the idea that CI users cannot enjoy music. Yes, that's true. Many studies show that a large portion of CI users are not satisfied 
about how they experience music. And I could totally understand that, given the poor perception of score in pitch, discrimination, melody identification, timbre recognition. Fair enough. Do I look like oh, someone? I should stop doing this. But we can also see the glass as half full and be amazed by the fact that 43% of CI users listen to music regularly, despite their poor ability to identify melody. We can also be amazed by the fact that 30% of them are still playing music, despite not being able to perceive small pitch interval. Based on this, we can formulate this hypothesis. CI users can appreciate music despite not being able to perceive some of the building blocks of music, such as pitch, timbre, melody, because they focus on some other musical cues, such as rhythm and dynamics. To test that hypothesis, we have revisited an old paper of us. In this study, we wanted to know if CI users could perceive musical emotion. So we asked them to rate 28 unfamiliar piano pieces and rate the emotion on a continuous slider label happy and sad. Here's the result plotted as a function of the tempo of each piece. The piece in red were composed in major mode with the intention to convey a happy mood, like this one. In blue, I've plotted the sad piece composed in a minor mode to convey sad emotion, like this one. Few things are interesting here. First, it seems like CA users were able to do the task quite well. All the happy pieces were judged as mostly happy and all the sad one was judged mostly as sad. Given the difficulty of CA user um, to perceive harmony, we might argue that they could base their judgment purely on the tempo and discard any tonal information. However, if it was the case, we would have found a perfect correlation between tempo and emotion. Could it be that they rely on the mode? Martin Bachman Bartel and his group have published many papers studying the perception of harmony in CI users. They show that CI users are able to discriminate major chords from minor chords. However, in the context of real musical piece, it seems unlikely that CI users are able to discriminate a melody in minor mode uh, compared to a melody in major. Therefore, we argue that other tempo cues besides tempo might be present in the piece and might be enough just to convey musical emotion. So to test this hypothesis, we've designed an experiment with Tamay Patme. Hi, I'm Tamay Patre where we have asked normal hearing listeners to judge the emotion content of a musical piece that were played on the congas. To create those pieces, we have used the same musical score as the piano pieces and play them on the congas. Here's some example. Folks, the piano, and then the congas version. Now let's look at the result. You can see that the data reproduce very well the, the, the data of the CI users. This proves that it is possible to judge the emotional content of a musical piece without any tonal cues. Another interesting feature of this experiment was that we have asked our listener to rate how much they enjoyed each piece. You can see a significant effect of mode. They enjoy more the happy piece in major mode. This is in contrast with the result of the normal hearing listener judging the piano piece. And this makes sense because we enjoy as much happy song than sad song. But we cannot really understand why you see a user like better the happy pieces. Therefore, we've asked our normal human listener to rate their preference over the congas piece. But here's the result. You can see that as for the CI users, when asked to judge on purely percussive music, normal human listener show a clear preference for happy songs. The take home message here uh, from this experiment is that we can stimulate the musical judgment and pleasantness of CI users uh, by reducing the musical signal to a purely percussive aspect. 
In the next part of this presentation, I want to show you another experiment that we've done during Stefan Spagmov's Master of Prague. Hello, this is Stefan. Nice to meet you. In this experiment, we wanted to see if CI users could perceive the musical tension of a classical piece of music. In this experiment, normal human listeners and CI users were asked to listen to a piece composed by Mozart and played by an experienced pianist and to rate their perceived musical tension on the slider in real time, going from no tension to very tense. Here is a little video clip in which you will hear the music and you will see a little red dot showing the average rating of the normal hearing listener. You can see that the task was quite straightforward for normal uh, hearing listeners. I'm plotting here now the results of the CIE listeners uh, on top of that. As much to our surprise, it is very similar. Yes, there are some parts that are significantly different, but overall, it's the same shape. Like in the first study, we can ask ourselves if CI users have or did rely on musical harmony uh, of dissonance and consonance to do the task. Given that uh, David Landsberger and his group show that CI users can have a sense of dissonance, it might be possible, although I'm still a bit suspicious about that. So to study that question, we have analyzed the performance of the pianist using some MIDI sensor. And so for each note play, we were able to extract the exact timing and the exact velocity of the keystroke. We were then able to reproduce a new performance by keeping exactly these parameters of timing and velocity constant, but vary the note or randomize the note played. Then we have asked normal hearing listeners to repeat the task with this new stimuli. We have kept the interpretation by keeping the timing of the note and how fast uh, each note were played. But we get rid of all the musical notes, all of the harmony. Um, so in this new video, the red dot is the average rating also of the normal hearing listeners.
you can see now that both ratings are very similar. This result shows that normal hearing listeners can experience musical tension in a similar way as CDI users when exposed to eternal music. Get rid of all the notes, but you keep still the interpretation and that's enough to experience music in a rich way. We often use the analogy that CI users perceive music as if someone was playing piano with a boxing glove. This result seems to give ground to this image. However, if they perceive music as atonal, how come they like it so much? Yes, many people enjoy atonal contemporary music. However, I'm pretty sure that Madonna have sold more records than Schoenberg, Boulez and, and Ligeti together. In fact, when you ask our own normal hearing listeners participant how much they enjoy both versions, the tonal one, the original one and the one with all the notes crumble, they all agree that the atonal one was much less pleasant. On the other hand, a CA user showed no preference between the tonal and the atonal version. Whether you play the right note or not, that doesn't matter to them. They like it in the same way. So the fact that they don't rely on tonality and harmony to experience music doesn't mean that they perceive everything as dissonant. Maybe they perceive any, everything as more neutral, neither consonants or dissonance. So to investigate this with Michelle Elwilson. Hi, I'm Michelle. We have asked normal and CI users to rate different unknown piano piece and some of its modification. We could, for example, shift the whole piece by one octave into a range that should excite more different electrodes. We could also change the timbre from a piano to a simple sine wave. Finally, we can remap the melody into a pentatonic scale. So without going too much into a lecture on harmony, the pentatonic scale is, as its name suggests, a scale made out of five notes. It has a specificity that it doesn't contain any dis dissonant chord. However, without those dissonance, music can sound a bit boring and dull. So here's an example of an unfamiliar piano piece. And here's how it sounds like when we map each note to the nearest note of the pentatonic scale. That doesn't sound bad, but is not incredible as well. We have asked normal hearing listeners and CI users to reach each musical sample and its transformation on a Mushra interface, just like interface. And here are the results. I'm not going to go into detail but the important take-home message here is that we could observe a clear decrease of enjoyment rating for the normal hearing listeners between the original and the pathetic scale. However, not so much, not as big as between the original and the totally dissonant one that we saw in the first study. But for CI users, there's no difference between the original and the pathetic remixed of the song. Therefore, we might argue that the pathetic scale might be another interesting way to simulate the musical experience of CI users. So in summary, I hope that I convinced you that virtual meeting can be fun. The vocoder is not appropriate to simulate the perception of CI users. And if it's difficult to simulate how they perceive music, you can however simulate how they experience music by using some either percussive version of the music, an atonal version with a lot of dissonance, or a pentatonic full of consonants version of the music. By looking how percussive music can be popular, for example, like the Blue Man, or in the smaller scale, contemporary classical music can also be enjoyed by a lot of people. We can start to understand how CI users can enjoy music despite their poor perception of pitch and harmony. Thank you.